Welcome everyone to the Squash Match. This is the YouTube exclusive segment of the show where I talk about breaking news in the world of pro wrestling. Very, very unfortunate news came in earlier today, this midnight Philippine time. And you guys can assure I was already like fast asleep when this rumor came out. And uh, yeah, according to Sean Ross Sepp from Fightful.com, Bray Wyatt has been released from the WWE now. Oh my god. Like I said, this rumor came out or this news came out when I was like already like fast asleep. I was probably snoring already when this news came out. And when I wake up, I was like, holy shit. Like I saw a post on Instagram where it said Bray Wyatt was released. And I was like, um, I'll, I'll go check Twitter. This is probably like another fake news or whatnot. So I went on to Twitter and everyone was just like, oh my god, I'm in disbelief that Bray Wyatt has been released. And I legit got up the bed very, very quick. I was like, holy shit, what travesty is this? <laughs> what travesty is this? Bray Wyatt is released? Like, you guys can tell I was... I was very shocked. Like, up until now. Up until now, I am still, like, very, very shocked. Because, as we all guys know, Bray Wyatt is, like, one of the biggest stars in the WWE. Especially right now, um, with the guys like Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, uh, Drew McIntyre, Bray Wyatt, Bobby Lashley. You know, new guys. And, and he was one of the like the guys, like one of the big guys in the company, one of the biggest, like I said. And uh, to find out that he got released earlier, man, that was, that was shocking. It was very, very shocking um, because um, as a kid, I always loved Bray Wyatt. Ever since he, he came into the main roster um, with uh, Luke Harper, rest in peace. And Derek Rowan as the White family. Oh my god, I was like, yo, this guy is something different. Because he had that aura, he had that dark aura in him. And that's what made me love him. And when he, I actually, I actually liked him more than Cena back when they were like feuding. And uh, yeah, basically I loved him more than Cena. I was like, yo, Bray should win. Bray should definitely win this match. Because um, if if Bray loses, man, that would just hurt him so much. That would like hurt his momentum and all that sorts. And he lost. We all know what happened. He lost. So uh, yeah, basically, I loved him. I loved him ever since he was with the Wyatt family, and especially when he he redebuted, or he returned back in twenty nineteen after WrestleMania thirty five. Um, I was like, yo, Bray Wyatt with a new gimmick? Like, all right, all right, I'm gonna get invested. I'm gonna get invested. I'm gonna watch the segments every week. If there's gonna be another segment next week, then I'm gonna watch it. Because I feel like this is something that can turn into something dark. Because, like, I know Bray Wyatt. Like, like I know what, what, you know, like, I know what's about to happen. Like, I feel like something dark is gonna, like, culminate after, like, these segments and then every week it just get it just got darker and darker until we got the fiend oh my god probably my favorite probably my favorite gimmick in the wwe in a long time because it was different like he no sold finishers he looked like a beast he looked like an absolute beast in the ring like, he looked unkillable also. He looked very, he like, he looked unkillable. And that's what I loved about The Fiend, because um, he no-sold everything. He got up after like 8 or 11 curb stomps back in Hell in a Cell, back when everyone was angry that the match ended in a no contest because the referee was like, oh, Bray Wyatt is... He's still like a human being in a mask, all that, blah, blah, blah. And, I mean, yeah, I got angry, but as time goes on, I was like, yo, that actually made sense. I mean, for story continuity, 
and uh yeah for the like for like the storyline to move forward and uh, to keep Bray Wyatt from losing but I still feel like that could have been like the perfect time to give the title to him but uh yeah basically the fiend is like my favorite gimmick in the WWE in the last decade because it's different it's very different like Yes, you get to see like these supernatural WWE characters like The Undertaker. Or uh, is Kane supernatural enough? I'm not too sure if Kane is like supernatural enough, but I'll I'll count Kane. I'll probably count Kane. But yeah, Undertaker, Kane, and uh, you know, the Eater of Worlds, even the Eater of Worlds, Bray Wyatt. It was pretty supernatural. It was pretty dark. But The Fiend was like an entirely different breed of darkness. It was like, holy. If, like, it was like the same level as Ministry Undertaker. Because, but minus like the demonic, like, um, chants and the, the satanic cult thingy. Um, yeah, minus that, The Fiend is like, for me, is almost at the same level of Ministry Undertaker. And, you know, that's what I loved about The Fiend. And he won the Universal title, all sorts. He had that amazing match with Daniel Bryan at Survivor Series and Royal Rumble. And, uh, yeah, man, it was... Like, I was legit angry when he lost to Goldberg, though. I was legit very angry. Because, like, why would you give the title to Goldberg? Like, he'd just probably... Like, he'd probably drop it at WrestleMania. So I was like, why would you give the title to Goldberg in the first place if he's gonna, like, drop the title at WrestleMania? And uh, I was just angry. Like, my love for The Fiend after that match just, like, grew. I was like, yo, The Fiend, oh, yes, he lost. He lost. But I'll still support him. I'll, I'll support him a lot more. Especially at the time when he was, like, feuding with John Cena for WrestleMania 36. I was like, yo, Bray should win. Bray should definitely win. He should definitely win. And, uh, yeah, it was an amazing match. It wasn't, like, it was an amazing Match. I don't know if you guys considered the Firefly Funhouse match an actual match. But yeah, basically I loved the Firefly Funhouse match. It was amazing. It wasn't like it was an acid trip. And that's what I loved about it. And with all that character development, we came today we came here today learning that Bray Wyatt is released and uh man. Yeah, basically I feel sad for Bray. So, I'm not too sure. There's no, like, much information regarding his release. But I've heard that um, it was due to budget cuts. But I feel like I feel like he asked for his release. Like, for me at least. Uh, my theory is that he asked for his release because he was struggling mentally. He's not, like, on the right state of mind as of now. Because, like I said, um, Brody Lee passed away. Rest in peace. Um, a legend, an underrated superstar, an under an an underrated wrestler. So, yeah, rest in peace. And yeah, I feel like Bray Wyatt asked for his release because he wasn't on like the right state of mind, like he wasn't on the right mental state. And uh, yeah, but there I've I've been hearing more theories, especially right now, where everyone was like, yo. Bray Wyatt got released today, and he'd come back this August. And I was like, then what's the point of releasing him in the first place? Like, legit. But yeah, I feel like um, that doesn't make sense at all. Because what was, like, the point of releasing him when you're, like, gonna bring him back a few, a few weeks later or a month later? Like, what's the point of releasing him in the first place? So, yeah, but overall, man, I overall... I feel very, very sad for Bray Wyatt. I feel very sad. And, uh, yeah. Um, if he's struggling mentally, I'll include him in my prayers. Like, hopefully, hopefully he comes back to the right state of mind. Um, I know it's not that easy. Um, but, yeah, hopefully once he's ready, once he's doing great mentally, I hope he comes back and, uh, yeah, I am taking too long with this episode. Um, I, but yeah, I probably, I probably went too long with this with this episode of or this edition of the squash match. But uh, yeah, I mean, the news was just very sad. I feel like 
it was a very sad news. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm currently working on the CM Punk episode because of some unexpected circumstances. I'm not going to, like, specify what happened. But, uh, yeah, basically, I'm working on it um, probably this week. I'll have the premiere this week. No specific date. Any date this week. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys understand. Um, there was just some, like, unexpected things that happened. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I had to work on it a lot more. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Um, um, like, comment, and subscribe. Um, turn, the no- turn on the notification bell. This is the first time I said that. To get notified whenever the new episode is coming out. So, uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening. Peace.